Welcome back, my dear crime lovers. This is a new episode of The History of the American Mafia, a series brought to podcast by Fabio Fabiana and translated in red by Grace Cadlisi. I do hope you enjoy today's new episode. Today we're going to talk about one of the women famous inside the mobster world, and that is Virginia Hill. She was the Alabama farm girl who became the queen of the mafia. Born in Lipscomb, Alabama on the 26th of August 1916, as a child with her parents and nine siblings, they moved to Georgia. Tired of the abuse and brutal beatings that her brothers and sisters, her mother and herself suffered by the hand of her alcoholic father, at the age of seven, she caused her father severe skin burns using sausage fat. In 1931, November, at the age of 15, she married 16-year-old George Randall and ran away with him to Chicago. There, she quickly found herself immersed in the violent world of some of the most infamous gangsters. A year later, they divorced and she began working as a waitress and prostitute in order to earn a living. It didn't take her long, though, to become involved in the underworlds of New York, Chicago, Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Her first job at the beginning of her criminal career was a bag girl, a courier to transport cash and stolen goods to and from the main criminal groups in the largest American cities. This criminal activity immediately made her very rich, so much so that she managed to send money back to her poor family at home. It is said that it was Joe Epstein, Al Capone's bookie, who first nicknamed her Flamingo Bird due to her very long legs. According to some, the bookie was crazy about her, but others say he was gay and never laid a finger on her. Whatever the truth was, it remains that Joe Epstein became Virginia Hill's lifelong friend. She associated with Charles Fischetti, Al Capone's cousin and bodyguard, and to earn the respect and trust of the Chicago Mafia, she started a relationship with him. During those years, there had been a sort of cold war between the Chicago outfits led by Al Capone and Lucky Luciano's family in New York. So, Victoria Hill was asked to infiltrate the New York family, led by Lucky Luciano. She became Joe Adonis's lover in order to get inside the closest circle of Luciano's family, seeing that Adonis was his most trusted collaborator. Thanks to Adonis, she got into the management and the gambling and the rackets, obviously, that led to money laundering. She recorded all the criminal activities in a secret diary. Virginia Hill was a tough and cunning woman, a fighter, a master of timing, and certainly knew how to seize an opportunity to her advantage. Thanks to her beauty, her sex appeal, and her talent for laundering money and stolen goods, Hill can be considered the number one criminal to reach the top of the mafia in the United States of America. We can consider her a dangerous criminal on par with most infamous male mobsters, including Maya Lansky, Joe Adonis, Frank Costello, Johnny Rosselli, Charles and Joe Fischetti, Tony Accardo, Frank Nitti, Jack Rania, and above all, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Yes, Siegel, because he was the man who would gain her heart. Their love affair was a very intense one indeed. The two met for the first time in New York. She was there as a courier for the Chicago mob. They later met again in Los Angeles in the late 1930s during one of the legendary parties organized by the controversial Dorothy in Hollywood. Their love story started soon after and they almost immediately went to live together in a splendid villa in Miami Beach. 
With the gangster of Jewish origin, she set up an organization aimed at transporting narcotics from Mexico. She developed the smuggling routes for Siegel. Their covert operations and stormy romance lasted throughout the 1940s. It was in their Miami home that Bugsy Siegel was killed on June the 20th, 1947, hit by bullets fired from a war rifle through a window. She had declared that she wasn't at home at the time of the shots because they had had an argument. After Siegel's death, Hill continued to transport money and goods for Luciano, naturally all of illicit origin, and were transported to the States and also to European capitals, in particular to Switzerland, where she regularly deposited money into a Swiss bank account. On March the 15th, 1951, at the Federal Court in New York City, she was heard by United States Senate Committee on the Mafia Phenomenon. She showed up dressed in a mink coat, silk gloves and a large hat, basically looking like a movie star. Filmed on TV, she stole the show from everyone present. On that occasion, she didn't report anything regarding her mafia friends. She was reticent about all issues and questions they put to her. She denied ever receiving money from Adonis or Costello and she stated the income declared in the tax authorities was the result of earnings from bettings on sporting events. Housewives across America were glued to their televisions during Hill's questioning by the commission. Men gathered in pubs and cafes during their lunch breaks to watch the hearing. She became a famous celebrity throughout the country, but although she was not charged, detectives began investigating her for tax evasion. In 1950, she married Hans Hauser, an Austrian skier who became the father of her only child, Peter Hauser. In 1954, to avoid ending up in prison for tax evasion, she moved to Austria. Federal tax agents confiscated her home and properties and sold them at an auction to recover the amounts due in taxes. The FBI placed her third on their most wanted list. Hill, who had attempted suicide several times, was found dead. She had overdosed on sleeping pills in Kopli near Salzburg, Austria on the 24th of March in 1966 at the age of 49.